On October 30th, the Halifax Thunderbirds will return to the nest playing in the purple versus orange game and the draft got underway last night. We saw the defensive players picked by both Team Jameson, which is Team Orange, and Team Hossick, Team Purple. Now we're moving on to the forwards, and I have Pat Gregoire and Mikey Kersey back with me this evening to go through these packs of lacrosse cards we're calling them uh, in this segment. So we're going to start tonight with Team Orange and see the players that Cody Jameson has picked for his squad. Saying that he wanted to go with a little bit more speed, getting some players on his roster that uh, maybe he's a little bit more familiar with, he's had some fun playing with over the years. And let's take a look at those bodies. We've got Austin Shanks, Mike Burke, Jayton King, Brett Draper, Kyle Jackson, Eric Finnell, Clay Scanlon, and Cody Jamison himself. So uh, let's go down the list here. I wanna maybe a couple points about each player. We'll go back and forth between you, Pat, and you, Mike. Uh, Pat, I'll give you the first one, Austin Shanks. Phenomenal guy down low, just so good with that quick stick. We saw his best game of lacrosse for the Halifax Thunderbirds coming in the last game of the season against the Saskatchewan Rush. He's going to start to become more and more of a fan favorite. But, uh, Pat, what do you expect to see from Austin this season? I expect to see more big game performances out, out of Shanks. And I think his biggest issue is if he can stay healthy and stay in the lineup, there's no reason why he can't be a top contributor on this team and find himself near the top of the scoring leader, um, you know, in that top 10, top 15, because he's an elite shooter. Uh, he's a guy that continues to try to get better, learns. He's a sponge talks to his players on the floor, uh, can play with a ball in his stick, can play without, sets hard picks. Uh, and, and he's a guy that just is such a fierce competitor. He wants to win and he wants to be the best player that he can possibly be, be on the floor. And that's what makes him such a, a special player. Next, we've got Mike Burke. And Mike, I'm going to throw him to you. He's a player that found his way out of the NLL a little bit, but he's come back into the league and just been so strong and become Quite a big member of this team. What can you tell me about Berkey and what you expect from him this season? Uh, I think I think Berkey is, is one of those ultimate team guys. And, uh, you know, I know in the offseason, you know, one of the knocks against him was, you know, he's not a fast guy. He's not a big guy. Um, he doesn't have the hardest shot. But he does every little thing right. He battles for hard for loose balls. He's a selfish player. He sets hard picks. He's, you know, just a consummate professional and he's one of the most well-liked guys in the room. And, you know, Berkey, for me, uh, the big knock was, was the fitness side of it. And he's, he's taken that onto himself. And he's worked out tremendously over this break. And to me, I have seen him and I, he's in phenomenal shape, best shape I've ever seen him play. So I'm expecting really big things out of Berkey this year. And, uh, again, I think he's one of those guys that doesn't get talked about enough, uh, but an ultimate team guy. Ultimate team guy, Pat. Are we going to pick that up this season? I think that, that might take the place of big team guy. Ultimate team guy. I kind of like that. Print the shirts. I love it. I Let's love get it. That going. Uh, Pat, next one goes to you. That is Clay Scanlon here for Team Orange. Uh, what can you tell me about Clay? electrifying player this is a guy that his ceiling is just so so high he's not gonna blow you away with size uh but what he will do is creativity he every time the ball is in his stick there's just anticipation to see what crazy thing he will do with it behind the back feeds uh toe drags just a silky silky player so hard to get knocked off the ball and you know as a smaller guy being able to be that shifty and being hard to to knock down that's such a big thing and i don't think he's afraid to go in the middle of that i i know he is sorry in the middle of four i know he's ready to compete at the next level it's just the opportunity and just talking about how much depth the defense we were talking about last night well the offense just as much especially on that left side but if he can electrify this building with some great plays this coaching staff and management staff are going to have a hard time not trying to find how they can get him into the lineup Cody Jamison calling him a water bug. So I, I like the way yes. that uh, he, he was able to describe him there. Uh, next one, Shayton King. And he had a great showing in Ontario Junior Lacrosse League action this past season in the showcase. But we saw he's, he's just got such a great shot. He let it loose so many times, really led the way for the Six Nations Arrows. Mike, what did you like about his play and, and what got him that invite to camp this season? Well, I think Shane had, you know, again, tremendous junior career. He's always been able to uh, to shoot the ball. He's got a great shot. He's got a, you know, great vision of the floor. Um, so for us, you know, bringing a guy like that in, 
uh, to help compete for a position. Again, I think he, he has the tools to do it. Uh, again, looking at, uh, for me, it's going to be, you know, can he get off the floor fast? I mean, it, it doesn't seem like a lot, but, you know, that's a difference maker between whether a guy could make this team or not make this team. It's those little things that he has to do right uh, in this trial to, to get a chance of making this roster. As we continue down the list, we've got Eric Finnell, and he made up that Ohio, the Ohio State three, as I should call them, drafted a few years back. Uh, Pat, what can you tell me about Eric as he prepares for yet another season of National Lacrosse the Action? Well, Mike said it earlier, the ultimate team guy, ultimate team guy, big team guy, whatever you want to call it. This is a guy that you absolutely love having in your locker room and the offensive guys like having him on the floor because, yes, you have to have your sharpshooters, you have to have your playmakers, but you also need those big bodies to go in, set hard picks, free up some space for those playmakers and for your sharpshooters, and that's exactly what Eric Fennell is. He'll fight for loose balls, but when he does get a chance to score from the outside or the on, on the inside, he has some finish. So he's another guy that has struggled to stay within the lineup, not due to his play, but with some, some health issues. So if he can stay healthy, there's no reason why he can't, you know, be a contributor away from the ball. But when he gets his chances as well, we know he can finish too. Next is Nova Scotia's own Brett Draper. And I don't think there is going to be one cheering section in the nest that is louder than Draper's. It's going to have a lot of friends and family on hand. You go through Halifax and people are like, well, I, I know, I know Brett, I know Brett Draper. So his name is all over town and, you know, there's just so much excitement surrounding this, this player. Um, Mike, what are you hoping to see from Brett in the Purple versus Orange game? Speed and athleticism, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, for me, I'm, I'm looking for him to bring to camp. You know, we've got a lot of veteran guys on that right side. We need somebody, you know, with some, with some speed, you know, that's shifty that can get to the net. Uh, he's got a great shot. Uh, again, you know, you talk about Nova Scotia lacrosse, Brett Draper is always in the mix, right? He came to Ontario, played with the Orangeville Northmen, had a great season out here. So, you know, he's had some experience playing against some of the guys that he's going to be uh, competing against. So, uh, for me, I just want him to go in there, play himself, you know, be himself, work hard, uh, and you never know what's going to happen. But, you know, Brett's a, Brett's a guy I'm excited to see on the floor and see what he has to offer. And finally, Kyle Jackson. He is kind of Nova Scotia's own now because he's – made Halifax his home. So uh, a player that is very active in the community here, uh, very friendly, friendly guy. He had maybe a, a quieter season last year, but he's coming off of a premier lacrosse league title with the chaos in the PLL. And uh, I mean, he just had such a fantastic summer. So I think he's going to be in great shape and uh, poised to come back with his best season of national lacrosse league action this season. Uh, Pat, safe to say. Absolutely. And I think he's going to use uh, that momentum that he brought from that championship with the chaos. They also won this summer before with the, the cannons. So this is a guy that knows what it takes to win a championship. Yes, it's in a different discipline of lacrosse, but it's all the same. You know the sacrifices that you need to make. And you mentioned not so much a down season for Kyle Jackson, but maybe not as productive offensively. And he'll be the first one to tell you he believes that he needs to be more involved in the offense, putting the ball in the back of the net. We've seen him score some electric goals in the nest, but it's that consistency night in and night out that we need to see from Kyle Jackson. But the dedication is there. You mentioned he is in tremendous shape. He's a guy that still goes out every day, takes shots, works on his craft. And I think that he knows that you, you look at all the lefties on, on this team, not just Cody Jameson's team uh, for the scrimmage, but you look at the depth in this organization. He knows he's going to have to bring his, his tough stuff because he is going to be relied on to, to produce night in and night out on that left-hand side. Well, Cody Jameson pretty stoked on the forwards that he was able to draft. Let's hear what he had to say. Our offense is going to be exciting. Uh, a lot of fam familiarity. I always get that word wrong. A lot of familiarity with uh, with our group, and the young guys are dynamic. They can shoot the ball. You know, they can run plays. They can set picks. Um, so I think you know, our Team Orange brand is going to be exciting and fast. You know, we're gonna we're gonna push the pace a little bit here and try and make this a really you know high scoring game and and not the uh, boring game. All right, we are going to move on to Team Purple, and Haas will be the first one to tell you he, he doesn't get the offensive side as much as Cody might. He, he mentioned it a couple times when I spoke with him. But 
I mean, some pretty good picks coming for him too. Let's open up this pack of lacrosse cards. We've got Clark Peterson, Stephen Keogh, Chris Bushy, Connor Watson, Steph LeBlanc, Brandon Robinson, Owen Hill, and Owen Tyler. So let's start with Clark Peterson. Mike, I will throw this one to you. Uh, had such a strong rookie season with this team. He gives this organization uh, so many things to be excited about. You just know that he's going to be a big part of it for so many years to come. Uh, what can you tell me about Clark and your expectations for him for this coming season? You know, I, I think Clarky is, is, you know, he's a premier, you know, lacrosse player in this league. As far as the righties go, you know, I see him being uh, one of the best players in the league this year. I mean, he, you know, as a rookie, you always have, you know, those bumps and, and kind of moments where you wish, you know, you would have done things differently. But uh, for me, he is just a phenomenal athlete. He's a great lacrosse player, such a tremendous touch around the net. Um, you know, you give him that opportunity in front of the crease, he's, he's going to score a lot of goals for you. And, uh, I think he, he is ready for a big season, and I'm looking for a big season at the Clark this year. Yeah, I can't wait to see what he's going to do this season. One of the players I'm a little bit more excited to watch. But uh, let's keep going down the list. And another player who gives us something to be excited every single year, sweeping the turf. Can't wait to see it again for the first time in the nest this season. That's Stephen Keogh. Pat, I'll throw this to you. We've coined the term ultimate team guy, and I think we can crown this guy here. He's a guy that when he did re-sign with his team, I know his teammates were so happy to hear that he was going to be back because, again, he's a guy that is just so important, not just on the floor uh, with what he provides with offense and what he does setting those hard picks, battling for loose balls, but also a very strong veteran presence um, in the room and on the bench talking to these guys. And again, another guy that I spent a lot of time with uh, this summer with the Toronto beaches and uh, just seeing what he's able to do with some of these younger players. It's exactly how he helps teach some of the rookies, like a guy like Clark Peterson, you saw it last year working on angles of his shot and seem Keogh, one of the most elite, goal scorers uh, when he gets the time and space. And I think one thing that I will say is he is in tremendous shape coming to this year. Uh, if it's a teammate not freeing up space, I think he's going to be a little bit faster, a little bit stronger to create his own space as well. I'm expecting a big year. Obviously, we've seen what has happened with him in the past with some injuries, uh, but I think he has put that past him. He's in great shape and he's expecting a big year. And the reason he came back to the nest, one thing, he wants a championship in the East Coast. Chris Bushy is our next player on Team Purple, and it's this guy, we haven't seen maybe him hit a ceiling yet. Like, he's got so much more to kind of improve upon, but we've seen some flashes of brilliance, lots to be excited about with Chris. Mike, what can you tell me about this player and what he brings to this locker room? I think definitely flashes of brilliance. I mean, he had a game when we were in Rochester, seven goals, you know, one of his first games with the team. You know, he came in against Colorado last year, hadn't played a lot of games, you know, scored some huge goals right towards the end of the game. So, again, a guy that I don't think has hit his ceiling yet. Um, you know, he's got a phenomenal shot, a really hard, heavy shot. Um, he's good in the two-man game. Like, he does have all the tools. You know, his big factor has been running into the depth that we have on the right side. So, you know, for me, again, fitness is going to be huge. You know, is he going to be able to push guys around, you know, big defenders that we're going to come up against? Um, but again, I think he's a guy that can go off on any given night and score you three to five goals. So uh, again, he needs to just take advantage of the opportunity that he gets and make the most of them and get that consistent lineup. Connor Watson, a rare player here for Team Purple, and that's given the fact that he comes from the West Coast. Uh, maybe, Mike, I'll throw this to you and kind of just, you know, the scouting staff, the coaching staff, what made you go after a player like this and, and give him the invite to camp? Uh, you know, we were talking to our Western scouts, and I think uh, one guy that kind of got overlooked was, was Connor. And um, when we had the opportunity to sign him, we thought, you know, well, let's, let's give him a chance. Again, we, we typically haven't really grabbed guys from the West Coast, but, you know, lately, and, and this year included, we started looking at the West Coast as, you know, and looking at some of their players in a little more depth. So, you know, again, Connor's a guy that's going to push for a roster spot. Uh, he's a great shooter, good in the two-man game. He's very fast. So, again, we're hoping for good things out of Connor, and we're hoping that he impresses the coaching staff. Pat, Nova Scotia's own. <laughs> again, Steph LeBlanc, a newcomer to the team, brings that veteran presence. Really excited to see what he can do in a Thunderbirds uh, uniform. And just what's that going to be? 
I think he's the ultimate, you know, power forward. He's a guy that, you know, uses his big frame to free up space for some other players. But this is also a guy that has shown in the past that he can score, he can make plays, and, and he has no problem putting points up on the score sheet. And I think he sees this as an opportunity, not only just to be home here in Halifax, help grow the game uh, on the East Coast, but also an opportunity for him to, you know, add a championship uh, to his resume. He's a guy that, you know, every team that he plays for, he's always a top contributor. I imagine he will do the same. And he's just another deadly piece on that left-hand side um, that this offense is going to be able to throw out each night. And I know he's excited. I know he was disappointed. Uh, obviously, that he was supposed to play last season. It was cut short, but he is hungry and ready to prove um, that he still has a lot more game and a lot more gas left in the tank. Next is Brandon Robinson. Mike, what are you hoping to see from him in the 2021-22 season? Uh, again, I think, you know, Robbie has been like a Swiss Army knife for us. You know, us he, you know, he's played offense, you know, again, scored some, some big goals and games for us in Halifax. But also when we needed help on the defensive end, he went back and, and played solid defense for us. So when we started getting some injuries. So, again, a guy that I'd like to see more out the front door. Again, very much like Eric, selfless player, sets hard picks has sweet hands, can score. Uh, again, I think it's just, you know, putting all those pieces consistently together is something that I'm looking for Brandon to do. But he's going he's gonna to push for that, for that roster spot and, and definitely a game in and game out uh, spot in this lineup. And I think he has all the tools and ability to do that. Next is Owen Hill. And Pat, I will throw this to you. A bit of a small sample size. We haven't seen too much of him in recent years, but uh, what are you expecting to see from him at the Purple versus Orange game? Well, he's a guy, I think I mentioned this uh, with some of the other players, that he's a guy that, you know, at the junior ranks and uh, in college, we've seen him be able to put up points uh, and be a goal scorer, be a playmaker. But uh, when you look at the depth uh, of this team, what he's going to need to do, he's going to need to do all the small things as well. That means set those hard picks, get the nose dirty, cut to the middle, grab the loose balls and compete and compete. Uh, because we know who are going to be the top scorers on this team. We've already talked about them. It's going to be those guys that are going to be able to create the space for those guys and get their nose dirty, get their hands dirty, and, and, and do the grunt work. And I think he's a guy that obviously, when he'll get his opportunities, he's going to be able to put the ball in the back of the net, but it's the other things that he's going to need to fine tune uh, to make the next jump to this level. And finally, Mike, I will throw this to you. It is Owen Tyler and another player on this offense for Team Purple that is kind of unique coming from Jacksonville University, getting his chance to kind of sharpen his tools and get accustomed to the box game and kind of learn the culture for the first time. What are you hoping to see from him and what attracted the organization to him? Uh, again, he, I know Kurt has watched him, you know, play uh, over the years in Jacksonville where his son is, is at university. Um, and again, Impressed with his size and athletic ability. You know, he was one of the captains of the team. You know, had a great NCAA career. You know, he wants to get into the box game and he wants to learn. You know, so when you have a guy that's coming to you and wanting to learn, wanting to be that sponge, wanting to improve, you know, his craft and learn the box game, um, he has the athletic ability to do it. You know, whether how that's going to translate to the box game is, is always a different story. But um, again, he could be one of those diamonds in the rough. And I think, you know, he's coming in here. He's going to push himself. He's going to push other players. Um, and it'd be interesting to see how his uh, field game, which is very good, you know, translates into the box game. Well, Graham Hossick's saying for Team Purple that he knows what he's doing on the defensive end when he's building that roster, but not so much on the offensive end. Let's hear from him and his views on the team that he's drafted. I trust the guys I picked. Uh, they, Like I said, offensive side isn't necessarily my specialty, but I know all the guys I, get, I picked. Uh, they're going to put the ball in the back then. I have no no doubt about it, especially since we have all the big guys on, the, on our, our team. So, All right. Well, that will do it for us. I want to thank you, Pat Gregoire. Thank you, Mike Kersey, for joining me on the draft here. The purple versus orange game is set to go on October 30th. Tickets are available right now for free. You can get them at HalifaxThunderbirds.com. We really hope to see you there. That building is going to be electric. It's going to be great to have you guys back here on the East Coast. Can't wait for this season.